Hi everyone, and welcome to my Inktober 2017 sketchbook tour. I had such an amazing time working through the challenge this year. This is the second year in a row that I've attempted it, and I succeeded with all 31 days and all 31 word prompts, and I'm really proud of myself. It's such a great challenge because you really do push yourself to try new stuff, and I feel like I definitely learned some new techniques that I can bring forward into my new drawings. So that's an awesome positive from it. In terms of the supplies I used, this is a De La Rowney earthbound sketchbook with toned tan paper. Then after sketching each drawing, I then used Pigma Micron pens to add the inking. And obviously the inking was my absolute main priority. Uh, so to add any larger areas of ink, I was then also using a Pentel Pockets brush pen. It has this really awesome brush tip that you can see, and it really helps to add large areas of ink really quickly. Uh, so it was super helpful. Uh, then to add some gradients of shading and to add some depth to the drawings, I was using cool gray Copic markers, uh, specifically cool gray one, three, five, and seven. Um, I also actually used some colored Copic markers this time to add some hints of color to the drawings, and that was really fun. Uh, and then lastly, to add some highlights to my drawings, I was also using a white Prisma color pencil and a Uniball Signo Broad white ink pen. Um, I loved using all these supplies and it was such a fun sketchbook to work through and I can't wait to show you this tour. So here we go. On day one, the word prompt was Swift. Um, and there's actually a bird called a Swift. So I decided to try and draw one flying swiftly through a forest. Um, and I really focused most of the detail to its wings and uh, layering the feathers and using the Copic markers and their shading to just help that layered effect. Then I was also adding a bunch of highlights to really make it stand out in front of that kind of I made a kind of stylized, simplified uh, forest background. Um, and yeah, that was my take on the word Swift. Next up, on day two, the word prompt was divided. And as you can see, I tried to create two sections of land that have been kind of split in two. And this character is going to try and figure out how to get to the other side. Uh, it was really fun creating this 3D effect, making use of the highlights and contrasting the extremely dark shading that I added kind of looming through the center. Um, and I always love adding really bright caped characters to my drawings. Um, and in this case, this red caped character has appeared in loads of my drawings in the past. Moving on from that, on day three, the word prompt was poison. And in this case, I'd never really tried much mushroom or toadstool art before. And I was really inspired by the interesting shape of ink caps, especially this top section. Um, and I tried to add a more, f a more fantasy style with uh, green drops of poison all dripping down and creating this green poison river that's flowing through the landscape. After that, on day four, the word prompt was underwater. And I loved working on this one. Uh, I tried to split the drawing in two halves. So you have the night sky up here with the moon shining down. And th this light shining from the moon is highlighting all the details under the water. So you have this bright jellyfish with the seaweed and the two fish and a treasure chest. Um, I tried to fade some of the highlights by adding markers over the top of them. I did that for the seaweed, and then I left the, the, the highlights on the jellyfish nice and bright. Uh, and you can see I, I made use of some coloured markers again to really make this jellyfish stand out as the most prominent part. On day five, the word prompt was long. So as you can see, I tried to create a long mountain path that this red caped character has to travel along. Um, then I also thought about where I placed the moon in the sky in, in the top right, and then I placed the shadows accordingly, uh, also adding some bright highlights on some of the peaks. Um, and I also tried to fade the shading into the distance to try and create that distance effect. Um, then on uh, day six, the word prompt was sword. So uh, this was actually one of my favorite drawings I worked on through the month because uh, I, I just loved the way it turned out. Uh, obviously inspired by Sword in the Stone. And also I'm currently playing through Zelda Breath of the Wild. So really inspired by that setting as well. Um, I just I just loved working on the details of this, uh, adding some hints of green to the rocks, uh, adding the vine surrounding the, the sword and a little flower that's kind of blooming on top of it. Uh, then adding some really dark shading in the background that really helps to make the, the highlights stand out. And also adding some particle effects to add to that kind of uh, mystical look that I wanted to create. Uh, this was so much fun to work on. Uh, I think it's absolutely one of my favorites. After that, on day seven, the word prompt was shy. And as you can see, I worked on this tortoise that's hiding in its shell. Um, very much inspired by my previous sword drawing with the dark forest background. 
um, that really helps to make the, the highlights of the tortoise and the flower stand out. Um, also adding some particle effects that just help to, again, add to the fantasy style that I really love to work on. Uh, yeah, this was a really funny drawing to work on. Um, I'm really happy with how the, the tortoise shell turned out. Uh, I was kind of worried about how that would end up, but I think it worked out in the end. After that, on day eight, the word prompt was crooked. So I tried to create a, a haunted house that's kind of sitting on top of the hill with some really crooked looking trees. The house itself is crooked in, in its, uh, I don't know how it's standing. Um, and I added some steps going all the way up, trying to, again, create the effect of distance by making use of the shading and also thinking about where I placed the moon in the sky and then adding the shadows kind of looming down from the house, um, hopefully helping to add to its haunted appearance. Um, and yeah, this was, this was a fun kind of Halloween inspired drawing to work on. Next up on day nine, the word prompt was screech. Um, and as soon as I saw this word, I knew that I wanted to work on a screech owl. Uh, we have some screech owls near us where we live and they make so much noise sometimes uh, in the middle of the night and it's, uh, it's a bit crazy. Um, <laughs> so I, I knew I wanted to try this. Uh, I tried to actually create a more realistic looking texture to the feathers by using a brush pen and just adding quick strokes with it and I'm really happy with the the effect it gave. Um, this is definitely a style that I would love to try again and maybe in a video in the future. It was it was a really fun technique and it didn't take much time at all. I thought it would take a lot longer than it did so I'm really happy with that. On day 10 the word prompt was gigantic and in this case, my initial idea was to work on a giant pumpkin in a field, or maybe even a giant walking through a valley. But in the end, I tried to create this massive tree sheltering a city with a large forest surrounding the scene. Um, and I actually ended up loving working on this. Uh, I loved the idea of this world where cities are being sheltered by these enormous trees. Uh, I tried to add some crimson colouring to the leaves and then have some of them kind of flow down and pool on the ground. Next up, on day 11, the word prompt was run. So this is quite self-explanatory with a, a massive monster on the horizon with a character running for their life uh, in a kind of a, a forest scene with a forest path. Um, and I, I placed the moon strategically so that I could actually um, think about how I could place these shadows to further make this monster look even more massive by having this shadow really stretch out across the scene. Um, this is much more of a Halloween themed drawing again and it was a lot of fun. The word prompt on the 12th day was shattered. So I tried to create the effect of the page actually being shattered like glass. Um, this took a lot longer than I expected, I think because I tried to make all the lines sharp and smooth and uh, I was using a ruler as well to get all these angles and then towards the centre with all these small shards of glass, uh, the time really uh, built up uh, by just trying to add all these tiny little bits and then I tried to add highlights as well. Um, to each shard and um, I'm glad I did that because I really feel like it helped to add to the effect and overall I'm really pleased with this one. After that on the 13th day the word prompt was teeming so I decided to work on another underwater scene because I loved working on the last one. Um, I actually started with the background first with uh, this seaweed added, adding actually uh, hints of colour to the tips of each leaf then I added the highlights then I added the shading over the top of it then after that, that's when I inked in all these fish, uh, starting with the ones in the far distance, making them much smaller, then adding the much larger ones in the foreground. Uh, also adding highlights to each individual one, so that really added to the time it took, but I've, I really loved working on these underwater scenes. Moving on from that, the word prompt for the 14th day was fierce. So I wanted to create an angry looking wolf, really focusing the detail to the teeth and the saliva, uh, also adding that really angry eye, uh, adding hints of colour to these areas with the crimson marker and adding, adding some yellow teeth. Um, I also added a silhouette of white fur using the highlighter pen. Um, I liked having this effect kind of se separating it from the background. And in the background I added a kind of a, a stylized forest. Um, and just really wanted to focus the detail to the teeth and the saliva. Then, on the 15th day, the word prompt was mysterious, and I tried to create a mysterious looking doorway, um, so you really can't tell where it's leading, um, just playing with this kind of looming darkness, and then offsetting that and contrasting it with some highlighted bricks around the outer edges, um, also adding some vines, 
and a kind of a walkway so you can see that people have walked down there. Uh, just trying to create a, a really mysterious looking scene. Following on from that, the word prompt on the 16th day was fat. <laughs> and so I worked on this drawing of a cat. Um, I love cats, they're my favourite animal, and I wanted to make sure I worked on at least one cat's drawing during the month. Uh, I'm really pleased with this. I worked on a much more of a cartoonized style, with big bright eyes, with bright highlights, and rosy cheeks, uh, sitting on the step there, and daydreaming about eating a fish. <laughs> this is a really fun one to work on. The 17th day's word prompt was graceful, and I decided to attempt a drawing of a swan, uh, but I was really worried about how I would create the swan's feathers, but I'm actually really proud of myself for figuring out a method that worked for me. So for the background, I actually worked on the background first, inking it completely. Then for the swan, I added the shading first, then added highlights over the top to create the feathers. And I'm so happy with how this turned out. I also added a reflection in the water as well. Um, but this ended up being one of my favourites of the month, so it really worked out in the end. After that, the word prompt on the 18th day was filthy. And I, I actually took the method that I learnt from the swan and applied that to this drawing as well by adding all the shading and the colouring first, then adding the highlights over the top to create the fur. Um, just having this uh, cute pig sitting in mud, obviously on the farm with the fence in the background, um, and adding some light kind of shining down and highlighting the top of its head. Cloud was the word prompt on the 19th day, so I worked on this. Uh, really focusing lots of detail to these clouds and adding layers of them into the distance. Um, I tried to add a hint of colour as well. Then with the moonlight I made sure to highlight those sides. Uh, underneath the shadows on the land and then there's this tree in the foreground. And I kind of wanted it to look like the, the clouds were acting as leaves on this tree and I wanted it to kind of look like a bit of an illusion. Um, and I'm really pleased I made sure to add that hint of colour because I feel like that added a really nice effect. Next up, the word prompt on day 20 was deep, so I worked on this cave with steps down, uh, adding the really dark shading towards the lowest part, and then just adding gradients getting lighter and lighter, so you can almost imagine you can just step down into the darkness. And then I tried to contrast that with highlighted stones all around, um, and the stones actually ended up taking the most time because I really, really added a lot of highlighting and details to them, um, much more than I initially anticipated I would. After that, on day 21, the word prompt was furious. So I worked on this furious looking wasp, and it's obviously about to sting someone, and it's moving at real speed with all these motion lines. Um, I really focused lots of detail to this, and I tried to add lots of hair to its body, uh, focusing on the, the details of the antennae and the, the highlights on the wings, and even adding a bit of colour to this one, and I feel like that really helped to make it stand out on the page. On day 22, the word prompt was trail, so I worked on this forest trail, and I wanted it to have a lighter background with a much darker foreground, and my idea for that was that I wanted it to look like the kind of scene that you'd actually want to walk through, uh, adding some nice sunlight shining through with some particle effects, and adding some nice bright coloured leaves with some lighter leaves in the background, and then adding some nice crimson leaves in the foreground. Uh, I love working on stuff like this. Then, the next word prompt on day 23 was juicy, so I worked on this juicy strawberry with some silhouettes of strawberries in the background as well. Um, I really tried to recreate a more realistic looking lighting on this with a white Prismacolor pencil, uh, just looking at some reference photos and getting some ideas from there. Um, and I also added a water drop just hanging from the bottom of this one. Moving on from that, the word prompt on day 24 was blind. So I worked on this really happy looking mole. Um, I tried to give him a big smile and some glasses and some sharp claws for digging. Um, and I followed the same routine as I did with previous animal drawings, where I added the shading and the colouring first, then added the highlights over the top to add the fur effect. Um, I also added a kind of silhouette of highlighting as well to really make him stand out. On day 25, the word prompt was ship. So I worked on this scene, with this ship sailing through, some tentacles in the foreground, and the moon shining down and highlighting everything. Um, I also chose to add a hint of colour to the horizon, and I'm glad I did this because I really feel like it helps to make the ship stand out. Um, I also didn't realise how much of a challenge it would be to work on a ship like this, with all the sails and the flag and the, the ropes hanging down. Um, it took a lot of time, uh, but I'm really happy with this scene. 
On day 26, the word prompt was squeak, so I worked on this drawing of a mouse. And similar to my previous animal drawings, where I added the shading and the colouring first, followed by the highlights, and adding big bright highlights to its eyes and nose, and making them really stand out, then added blades of grass around it, with just light shading on the ground in front. On day 27, the word prompt was climb, so I worked on this drawing of this massive tree towering above a forest with some really nice coloured leaves, um, and the caped character is standing on this branch. Um, I'm imagining that he is on a quest and he needs to be able to see into the distance to see his route and kind of plan ahead, so he needs to be able to climb up and see over the forest. Following on from that, on day 28, the word prompt was fall. So I took two meanings from this. Um, the season, uh, so you have the, the brown leaves and the acorn, and then the, the actual motion of falling from the tree. Uh, so I just added lots of detail to this acorn, uh, adding some nice hints of colour to it, along with the leaves. Um, and this was a nice kind of seasonal drawing to work on. On day 29, the word prompt was united. So I worked on this scene with the red caped character, uniting with the blue caped character and the yellow caped character. And they're obviously about to tackle whoever is in this evil looking castle on top of this crazy cliff formation, uh, surrounding it with a forest, and the moon shining down and highlighting everything with some birds in the sky. Um, I love working on crazy fantasy scenarios like this, and uh, this was a lot of fun to plan out. Next, the word prompt on day 30 was found. So I worked on this treasure chest within a cave, sitting on top of this rock, uh, in a very similar style to the sword drawing I worked on, uh, having that contrasting dark background really showing up the highlights on this chest. I'm um, having the light shining down with the particle effects, and the green colouring on the rocks, and the golden colouring of the coins inside the chest. Then finally, on day 31, the word prompt was mask. And as it was Halloween, I decided to work on something a bit scarier. And so I worked on this vampire ghoul character with these bright red eyes, uh, this hood and this really interesting looking mask with this pattern and lots of crimson colouring. Um, and after that, this is my Inktober sketchbook completed. I had such an awesome time working through this challenge and I genuinely feel like Inktober these past couple of years has really helped me to develop my art style. Uh, so for that, I am extremely grateful. Um, I highly recommend trying this challenge if you get a chance. Um, I, I definitely want to take part again next year because I feel like it's just it's such a good thing to be a part of. Uh, just seeing the amount of people sharing their work online during this challenge is amazing and I, I loved being a part of that. Let me know if you took part in Inktober, and also let me know what you thought of it, and how did it go for you. I really hope you enjoyed watching this, and if you want to see more drawing or painting videos, then feel free to subscribe, and any likes or shares on this video, they really mean a lot to me. Um, if you want to follow my progress and see photos before I post these videos, then check out the links in the description box below to check out my Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And once again, thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for the support. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you're having an awesome day, and I'll see you all soon.